Welcome to the Transformation Worship Experience Sunday morning. We're very delighted to have you with us today. We give joy to the Lord. We praise Him for keeping us and keeping you. Let's go to church today as the choir leads us.
we are yet praising the Lord for His goodness, His mercies toward us. And I thank God for the songs that lead us into worship and letting us know, in spite of our circumstances and situations, that God is still with us. We celebrate, we worship Him through song, but we also worship Him now through giving. It is offering time. I want to thank you for the many faithful givers who have come and helped us during this period of time to maintain and sustain the ministry over this COVID-19 period. You are a blessing and have been. I invite you to continue to do so. You may do so by one, electronically, giving through PushPay. Instructions will be on the screen. You'll see how to do that. You may also write by check your contributions to the Transformation Church, sending them to 5150 Baltimore National Pike, Baltimore, Maryland, 21229. And you may also do direct deposits through your bank. You may check your banking institution for that information. We're grateful and we're thankful. God bless you. It was a few weeks ago that a message came into my heart, and we entitled that message then, Not a Matter of Faith, but of Humility. That message came out of the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse number 14. And it was there that I began to hear the message from the Lord that was speaking to my heart, affirming that this was a time and a season in which we need to understand what it is that we need to know in terms of from God's point of view. When I looked back at the text and looked ahead of the scriptures before, I was really drawn to that word that he says, and if I or when I cause pestilence to come upon the land, then he said, if then my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. He said they would, he would hear from heaven and he would heal their land. Going from there, we also, just a few weeks ago or a week or so ago, uh, with our churches there in New Jersey, uh, came with a message and a thought that came to me and we entitled it then, A Celebration and Affirmation a warning. I add to this today, and mercy. Let's read from 2 Chronicles 7, 10 through 15, from the English Standard Version. Hear the reading of a word. On the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their homes, joyful and glad of heart of the prosperity that the Lord had granted to David and to Solomon, and to Israel, his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. All that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord 
and in his own house he did successfully. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night, and he said to him, I have heard the prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or to send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. I went back again and I looked over it and I began to see some very precious observations that I make for us today in the season at the time that we're in. The first is that which is captured in our title, a celebration. They had just come together, the people of Israel, and they had celebrated the very fact that the temple was now completed and the Lord had shown favor to Solomon and upon him and them as a nation. And as a result, they all were happy. They left going home rejoicing and celebrating the goodness of the Lord. Celebration. How amazing it is that in the midst of celebration, there also is the reality that celebration does not last all the time. There are moments in which things do change. We're in a changed moment. We're in a moment now that we are not celebrating victoriously, but whether we are going through a process of trying to figure out what it is that God you would have us know and what it is you would have us do. They came, they celebrated, and they went home. And as they went home, uh, they went home again joyful, going home joyful, and even after they were home joyful that night, even Solomon himself received the word from the Lord, and the word of the Lord came to him and told him basically that he was pleased. This was an affirmation, a celebration of the people, the joyous presence of the Lord, a glorious and good time, and an affirmation that comes and tells Solomon, I am pleased with what you have done. I am satisfied and I will affirm this house, this temple, as the place in which I myself will dwell and receive sacrifice. How wonderful it is. A celebration, an affirmation. But then in the midst of this celebration and affirmation, there is also a warning. Understand that there is a whole lot of ups and downs when it comes to the people of Israel. Uh, they were doing good things, but they also had a tendency to do bad things. They would fall out of favor with God, but God would always restore and redeem them. It is in during this time of celebration, of grateful thanks, for now the completion of the temple that was built by Solomon, a uh, temple that he built because the Lord had instructed and said to David, you will not do this, but your son will. And so Solomon comes and he completes the task. And it is a joyful time, a time of celebration, a time of worship, a time of everyone feeling their very best. Even Solomon, getting the word of affirmation that is so critical to every minister, every leader of God's people, to be affirmed by God Himself to know that you're doing the right thing, you're heading the right way. But then He also sees ahead and beyond. But He says now, when I would go through the process of causing there to be a lack of rain, when I have the locusts come and devour the crop, and 
when I send pestilence amongst my people. The pestilence again is that which is a destructive thing that kills, that jumps into the systems of people and causes there to be loss of life and great suffering. When I send pestilence, I want you to do this thing. Remember that I am still God who cares for you. All I want you to do is to humble yourself. I wish to go back and speak on that point again. I observed then and I observe now. I do not still see the type of humbling, the type of humility that needs to be shown in a time like this. This is still a time in which we should not be trying to, one, either pat ourselves on the back or trying to in some way cast blame to someone else or find some other means to explain why we're in the state that we're in. Not only that, it is not the time that we should be proving how strong and powerful we are in faith by demanding and commanding things. We are in a rough spot now. We are perhaps as divided as we could ever be as a people. When I look at it and understand what's happening and see what's taking place amongst us, when I see the revolts that take place, when I see the different type of words that come out of people's mouths with regard to the violation of laws or principles or protocols that are established for us, that is not humility. That is brazen boldness and prideful, arrogant behavior. It's the kind of behavior that God still doesn't like. He doesn't like when we go about boasting ourselves and violating other people, naming them, pointing, giving blame to this and the other. That is not what God is calling for, not in this time. If anything, we ought to all be looking, says God, what is it that I'm not doing right? What is it that you would have me to know? I need a word from the Lord. It's very important that in this season, in this time, as we're starting to open things back up, we hope we don't open things too soon. It's just recently that we've heard uh, even an announcement for opening churches back up. All of us want to get back into church, but at the same time, we want to be protective of those who are members of our church. Transformation Church, we made decisions that we will go back when it is safe to go back. There are a lot of things that have to be done. And we all need to be considering that this is not just a matter of us all going back in and hallelujah, slapping high fives and running around and hugging one another when we get back in. Oh, we're glad to be back in. No, no, no. We missed the point. We missed the point that this was a humbling season. And there is something that we need to know. And one of the things that came to me is that we have not perfected our relationship with God. We know how to do church. We know how to say the right words. We know how to present ourselves as righteous people. But at the same time, there is darkness in too many hearts. There is arrogance in too many people. Faith should not be a display of arrogance. Faith should be first a display of humility. It should be that when people see us, they do not see how prideful we are, but rather how humble we are. If it were not for the grace of God, if it were not for the mercies of God, none of us would be where we are. This time is a time for us to say, Lord, I thank you for keeping me. We're experiencing a lot of difficulty, but at the same time, we're also seeing a lot of grace and a lot of mercy. Once again, he goes and we see a celebration and we see an affirmation, but then he brings a warning. He says, when these things happen, don't think that necessarily these happen because of someone else. Know that I am in control of the universe. There is nothing that happens that I am not aware of. 
there may be times that I sin them myself. But he says to them, if this happens, usually it is for some form of misdeed or something that was not done right or something that we need to come to know. God is allowing us to learn something. My prayer is that, Lord, before we run back into our churches, that we learn what it is that the Spirit is trying to show us, to understand what it is that He's trying to say to us, to understand how sometimes shallow our displays of religious actions are, how our faith is not as strong and powerful and genuine as it ought to be, how sometimes it's just words. Even when we greet one another, we greet one another not necessarily in the genuineness of a greeting, but sometimes we have different thoughts in our mind, and what we're thinking is not always what we're saying. God knows where we are, and He also knows that sometimes we have taken over the glory that belongs to Him, we have cast it upon ourselves. As a minister, as a preacher, as a bishop, I must be very mindful and careful of the fact that I don't rob God of His glory, that I don't steal that which comes to me only by grace and mercy. As we sit in your home today and as you're going through, I would use that Psalm 139 as a perfect way to begin it. Lord, search me. Know my heart. See if there be anything in me, any wicked way, any imperfect way in me that is not right. Cleanse me of it and set me free. The Spirit of the Lord knows where you are. The Spirit of the Lord knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows right from wrong. He knows Actions from reality. He knows drama that is merely playing out a part than those who are truly broken and contrite and hungry for God. This is a time for our hunger for righteousness to grow. This is a time for us to declare before we step back into the sanctuary again that we will not go in there the same way we did before. For if we don't learn anything from COVID-19, we ought to learn that this is time to get our hearts right with God. To move not again in arrogance, but in humility, knowing and trusting God for Him to be able to fix our situations. There are a lot of us in government and other places right now that are trying to fix situations trying to come up with this cure, with this vaccine, with one thing and then the other, and this we should do. The science is there for us to be able to do this and to do it well, because God has blessed us as a people to have the brilliance and the understanding of how to do these things. But yet and still, there are some things that we got to trust God for. We will do what we have to do, but then understand what the Lord is saying. Do not take so much upon yourself that you try to do all the things that I should be doing. You want to be the one who is up front, the one who is before the camera, the one who is declaring righteousness and power and the ability to do through faith whatever needs to be done. I speak to you and says, no, 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 no. It's not by the strength or power of your faith. It's by the power and the strength of our humility and our willingness to say, God, I need you more than anything. I need you. We used to sing a song, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. And to be blessed is something that we seek from the Lord. So bless us now, my Savior, as we come to thee. Again, a celebration, an affirmation, a warning. The warning to us is this, is that when we do not fix what is wrong, the wrong will continue to divide us. Wrong will continue to flow amongst us. When we do not honestly confess 
when we see wrong that wrong is wrong, it will eat away as a cancer or as this virus, destroying lives that should never have been destroyed. A lot of people's lives are changed. Some are changed forever. Some are hurt beyond what would be human repair. But there is a hope. And that's a part of my message today. We're trying to do everything we can in our own power. But there is a grace that is greater than all of our sins. There is a grace that is greater than all of our failure. There is a grace that is greater than all of our inability. It is the grace of God who gives us mercy. Celebration, affirmation, a warning, and mercy. It is powerful if my people called by my, name, by my name will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. This is mercy. I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. When I took time to look at that one more time, I had to begin to give God praise and thanks because he's saying to us, I have the answer. I am ready to restore and ready to heal. As much as we've lost over these weeks, over these days, indeed months, still God has grace and mercy. He has grace and mercy for you who are watching me today. Who are going through and wondering how you're going to get over this. I'm here to tell you today, mercy is coming. I'm here to let you know that no matter what you've gone through, what you've experienced, and how badly and poorly you might be feeling, the word comes to you today that God has grace and mercy available to you and mercy is coming. In spite of all of our problems, in spite of everything that is happening, God's grace and mercy is here to take care of us. Celebration, affirmation, warning, but mercy. That is the thing that keeps me celebrating. That's the thing that keeps me joyful. That's the thing that keeps me lifting my head and my hand up and saying, thank you, Jesus. In spite of all of the things that I see, the suffering all around, still it is the grace and the mercies of God that make it so whenever we get back into the church, we'll be out on the parking lot in a little while, transformation, and we'll start there. And before we go in, we're going to take all the necessary steps we need to take. We'll mark off the spaces. We'll make certain that protocols are followed in doing all the things to protect our people because we are shepherds. Shepherds protect their flock. They don't rush them in to an unknown danger. And all of those who are calling to rush in, they're not considering the flock. They're considering their own selves and their own righteousness, which is to God sometimes stink. Now, I don't usually use words like that, but God sees and God knows. The very first chapter of Isaiah, he comes and they are giving up all kinds of sacrifice, all kinds of sins, and everything going up to the Lord, and their heart was not changed. Their spirit was not right. They had mouth worship, but not soul and heart worship. God desires true worship. That when those who worship him in spirit and in truth, he says, who has told you to send all of these sacrifices up to me? I am sick of it. They stink to me. Don't come bringing this kind of worship to me. I want to see heart worship. I'm speaking to you today from my heart, my heart to you, to let you know we've had a warning. We're still going through, 
but mercy is coming. You can celebrate in your living room right now that mercy is coming. Tell, tell your neighbor, look, turn around, those sitting in that room with you, tell them, mercy's coming. Mercy. The bishop says, mercy's coming. It's coming to your house, and it's already in mine. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because there's a celebration, an affirmation, a warning, but mercy is coming to you. Lord Jesus, right now, I pray that you would give us the strength, the power, the wisdom to understand and know what it is that you're trying to convey to us. Let us not be quick to rush back in to a house that already to you, Lord, needed to be sanitized afresh with the power of your grace to cause the right spirit to be amongst your people. Lord, for it is your house. It is not ours. And it needs to be kept in a way that honors you. So Lord, look upon us, those who are sick, those who have experienced, Lord, various difficulties in times like this. I pray, God, that you help them, that you send to them what they need to strengthen them in body, mind, and spirit that you give us everything we need, O oh God, to return to you in an authentic and real way. Help us, God, not to seek to bash others or to show how strong and powerful we are. This is a humiliating time. This is a time for renewal. This is a time for restoration. And God will restore his church and restore his people. And I am not and you should not be concerned at all about what is happening and what is going on in terms of rights being taken away. This has nothing to do with your rights. This has everything to do with your heart and with your spirit. So God, I say, forgive me Forgive us all for any and everything that has been done that does not please you. We pray for your mercy. We pray for your forgiveness to all of those who call out your name, but whose hearts are far from you. Help us now, Lord, and let us receive the mercy that is surely coming in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Door parking lot service at 5150 Baltimore National Pike Transformation Church. It is the beginning of what we hope to do in terms of preparing for reentry back to the sanctuary. But now, for safety's sake, we still will be on the parking lot. You'll get more details about this later. We are also so delighted for the graduates in 2020, a very special time. We just want you to know that shortly you will see a list of our 2020 graduates. They will appear our way of recognizing them and celebrating them. Thank God for you. Congratulations, 2020 graduates. We're proud of you. God bless you. Stay safe.